Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. You may or may not have noticed that there's a big buzz going around about these new smart telescopes that are hitting the market. These units that are a telescope, a camera, and a mount all built into one small portable device. Well, I finally got my hands on one as well. This is the ZWO C-Star S50. So, is it worth the hype? Find out in today's episode of... It's, it's Alive! alive. <laughs> The ZWO C-Star S50 is a smart telescope all in one unit. It's a go-to mount. It is a camera and a telescope all in one small portable package. And it goes for around 500 US dollars. That is about the same price as just my star tracker alone, not even counting a modified DSLR camera and a lens or telescope of some kind. It's an incredible deal. I don't even know how they pull it off. So ZWO actually reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review one on my channel. And of course I said yes, but no money has exchanged hands. I get the option of buying this unit from them when I'm done and they don't have any influence on my thoughts or opinions. That's all me. All right, got that out of the way. Let's go check out the C-Star. Let's go ahead and get this started, shall we? Ah! Ah! All right, here we go. Inside the box we have a rock, a tiny windmill, and a Rubik's Cube. Just kidding, it's another box. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, this looks amazing. Inside the box is another box. Pandora's box here. I guess this is the actual case for it. I've seen this in reviews already. It's definitely like a hard foam. It's super light. I could definitely see you throwing this in the back of the car and traveling with it. God, oh my God. <laughs> you guys can see this. But it's just two pieces. It's just, this is the tripod. Very heavy duty, nice, firm feeling tripod. Here we've got the actual unit itself. It's even smaller than I thought it was gonna be. And this is the solar filter. This is one of the most exciting things about this setup for me because this will make photographing the eclipse next year so much easier. One hour later. Okay, I'm back already. I figured I'd, I'd just go ahead and fire this thing up for the first time with you. I want you to join me for this. Another thing I left out earlier is this also came with this uh, charging cable. It's got uh, a charging port on the back. It looks like it's USB-C, I believe. I've downloaded the C-Star app on my phone. And so I'm just gonna find that and open it up and we're gonna go from there. Okay, it looks like I'm supposed to turn this on first. So let's go. I guess it's on. Powering on, ready to connect. This thing just spoke to me. She asked me why, and I just went on and told her. What on earth are you up to this time? Well, she keeps saying she's ready to connect, so I figured we'd just spend the afternoon getting to know one another. So let's talk a little bit about what the C-Star is made up of. The tripod is made out of carbon fiber and I believe aluminum alloy, and it's very solid very sturdy, and it's it's built a lot like the Manfrotto tripod. I used to have a very high quality tripod that was unfortunately stolen from me. Now, this is as tall as the tripod gets. So you better get comfortable sitting on a stool or on the ground or find you a good sturdy solid table to set this on, but I haven't had any luck with that. I just like to put it on the ground. This right here, this is actually a go-to mount. That's right, it'll actually point to whatever you tell it to. Just connect your phone to it, tell it to go to whatever object that you can find or think of, and it'll automatically point right at it and track it throughout the night. Now the tracking mount's not perfect. It is an alt as or altitude azimuth mount instead of an equatorial mount. If you don't already know, let's talk about the difference between an alt as mount and an equatorial mount. An alt as mount can only move up, down, left, and right. Now at this point, we're gonna use a little help from my friend, the intergalactic space mustard. This is gonna represent an object rising in the night sky. It'll come up over here in the east, maybe in the southeast like Orion. And as it gets higher, it will rotate like this. And by the time it's setting, it'll be upside down. 
When photographing a target with an alt as mount, it's gonna capture the target coming up like this. Then you'll look at a picture 30 minutes later and it'll probably look a little bit more like this. Then a little bit later, it'll probably look something like this. And then later on, something like this. And it's very difficult to stack all that without getting horrible stacking artifacts. And you can't do really long exposures because you might actually catch this thing rotating within the exposure, causing it to streak, trail, get blurry, whatever. An equatorial mount or a equatorial star tracker, on the other hand, will actually rotate the camera's field of view along with the object as it's moving, kind of like this. That will allow your target to keep the exact same framing all night. Now inside here is actually a triplet apochromatic refractor telescope with a focal length of 250 millimeters and an F ratio of F 4.9. That's insane. This thing is running about $499 and it's hard to find a triplet refractor telescope, especially an apochromatic refractor telescope, anywhere near that price. Now, triplet apochromatic basically means it's got three glass elements inside of here that's used to correct for chromatic aberration or when your colors don't quite all focus at the same time. I actually own a triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. I'm gonna get tired of saying that. And uh, this thing definitely costs more than the Sea Star, just the telescope. And got the camera right here on the back. This is about 275 millimeters. It's a Radian 61. I believe Sharp Star had one that was much cheaper and it was the exact same specs. But anyway, does the Sea Star see kind of what this sees? Not at all. It's dramatically different and that has a lot to do with the built-in camera. Inside here is a small camera that uses the Sony IMX 462 sensor. That is a tiny sensor that's typically used in planetary cameras like this. This is not the same one, but it has a similar sensor size. Can you see that in there? That's the size of the entire sensor. Like I said, this is not the exact same camera and sensor, but they are very close. So what does a field of view with a tiny sensor and a 250 millimeter telescope look like? The field of view you get with the C-Star is more along the lines of this. That's right, this is a Celestron C11. Now I've got the reducer corrector on it, bringing it down to about 1,700 millimeters-ish. Yeah, the field of view of that paired with a full frame sensor camera is almost identical to the C-Star. Let's actually jump onto the computer and check out a field of view calculator and see just how close they are. Okay, this is Astronomy Tools field of view calculator. I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you ever wanna check it out. We're gonna to switch to imaging mode up here and we're just gonna make this comparison using the moon because everybody's used to seeing the moon. For the telescope, we're gonna give it a focal length of 250 millimeters because that's what the Sea star is. And for the camera, let's see what it looks like with a full frame Canon camera. I have the Canon 6D, there we go. Now I'm gonna click add to view. So this red box here is the field of view with a 250 millimeter telescope and a full frame Canon camera. And as you can see, the moon is tiny. It is absolutely tiny. Now let's come back up here and change the camera to the Sea star sensor. There we go. That's the sensor the Sea star uses right there. Click that, click add to view. Now the yellow box is the field of view with the Sea star Look at that. I'm just gonna X out of the Canon field of view so we can really see what this looks like. That's incredible, you're zoomed right in on the moon. Now let's do one more comparison. We're gonna compare the Sea star field of view to the giant Celestron C11 with a Canon camera field of view. I'm gonna change the camera back to a Canon 6D. There it is. And for telescope, I'm gonna find the Celestron C11 in there. There it is. And I'm gonna make sure I add in my reducer. I have a 0.63 reducer, there we go. I'm gonna add that to my field of view. And there we go, that's insane. They're almost the exact same field of view. The green box is the C11 with the Canon. The yellow box is the Sea star The Sea star is a little wider. Well, that's about it. So how easy is it to set up and work this thing? Let's go outside and find out right now. Okay, now that I'm out here, just gonna set it down on the ground, turn it on, level it, and get started. Powering on, ready to connect. So once it says ready to connect, I go ahead and connect my phone to the C-Star's Wi-Fi network. Then I go ahead and open up the C-Star app. It brings me to the home screen right here, and it says that I need to level the C-Star. So I click on that, and now I have to move the tripod legs up and down until these two circles touch and turn green. It can kind of be a frustrating process, but 
it gets better once you get used to it. Now I'll go ahead and click on the S50 blah 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 icon at the top to get into my menu options and turn the anti-do on because that is extremely important around here as you can see. We have horrible do problems down here in the south. I'm so glad this comes with an anti-do feature. We can scroll down to the advanced features at the bottom and turn on save all frames so we can save all our light frames just in case we want to stack our own files later. Now back at the home menu, we can choose the options of stargazing, solar, lunar, planetary, or scenery. I usually go with stargazing, so we're going to hit that. Now at the bottom right, we have our planetarium feature. It looks like the Big Dipper. We can tap that, and it gives us a map of the sky, and we can scroll around and select a target that way, or we can go up to the top right and hit objects, and it gives us a menu with tonight's best and a lot more options to choose a target to shoot. We can also go back to the home menu and look at tonight's best as well, which is what I'm going to do because I'm just going to go for M42, the Orion Nebula. I'm going to tap Go Gazing. Finding object. Now the Sea Star is going to slew right to the Orion Nebula. Now over here on the right side of the screen, you can see the filter option. This is a dual narrowband filter that comes built into the Sea Star, and this is a great light pollution filter. It blocks out most light except for hydrogen alpha and oxygen three light. And it's great for emission nebula and not so good for galaxies and reflection nebulae, but luckily the Sea Star can determine that for you and it will choose not to use it if you're doing a reflection nebulae or galaxy, but you can also manually turn it on and off whenever you want right here. There's also an autofocus button. Yeah, this thing autofocuses. Autofocusing. Hell yeah. Autofocus completed. Once we're done focusing, we can just tap the red button here on the bottom. Preparing for image enhancing. And it's going to start taking dark frames for us. Start enhancing image. Okay, so when it's enhancing the image, it's basically taking a bunch of 10 second frames. And each time it takes a new one, it stacks it on top of the previous one. And the new image just keeps getting brighter and brighter. This is a process called live stacking. Look at that. That's just two frames. This is incredible. One hour later. So who is the Sea Star for and what are some of the pros and cons of getting one of these things? Well, they are definitely for beginners that don't want to go out and spend $2,000 and then climb the mountain of a steep learning curve to try to figure out how to work all this unbelievably expensive equipment. They can just spend $500 on one of these and get started immediately. It's for the casual astronomy enthusiast that doesn't really want to get into all the technical aspects of photography just yet. It's for the traveler always on the go and needs to travel light. I don't know where we're going, but we're going somewhere. Woohoo! It's for the person who wants to photograph galaxies in galaxy season but doesn't want to spend $3,000 on a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. It's for a group of friends sitting outside together just enjoying the wonders of space. Oh man, check out the Iris Nebula tonight. Wow, wow I, haven't I haven't been, been here, here in 12,000 12, years. years. Wanna, Wanna go? go? It's for the lazy astronomer that doesn't want to spend hours setting up, carrying heavy equipment to the yard, leveling your tripods, setting up your mount, adding counterweights, balancing, focusing your main scope, focusing your guide scope, polar aligning. The weather, the weather people, people lied. lied. It's, it's clear, clear outside. outside. Are you serious? Hell yeah, let's go. Collimating the telescope, taking the goat to Walmart, starting auto guiding, taking five minute test shots, taking three minutes, you know, you get what I'm saying. All you gotta do is just set this out in the yard and hit go. With it being so easy and portable, I would say this is for everybody. I can't think of too many bad things to say about it, but there are just a few. The alt as design is a little frustrating. I'd rather be taking three minute exposures and stacking about 60 of those, but instead I'm taking 10 second exposures and stacking maybe an hour's worth because after an hour or two, you really get bad stacking artifacts because of the rotation. The tiny field of view because of the camera's small sensor can be a little frustrating at times as well, just when you want to photograph something wide or you need to crop and there's just not enough room to crop because you're already so zoomed in. But that's just a small nitpick. Now the biggest problem I have with this 
by far, and this might just be my unit, but when it gets really cold outside, and I mean like below freezing, the dead grass has frosted over and it crunches beneath your feet cold. Yeah, when it's that cold, this thing starts to malfunction, or at least the Wi-Fi does, and I cannot connect to it. My phone just refuses to connect to this when it's super cold outside. I bring it back inside, and it connects just fine when it gets back into the, the warmth of my living room. But out there, I don't know, I just can't get it to connect. And that's kind of a drag because right now in the winter season, there's some of the best targets out there. And so I'm trying to find a workaround, a way to warm this thing up when it's outside so I can still use it in the winter. Luckily though, I live in the South and it's not gonna get super freezing very much. <laughs> we only get a couple of weeks of that out of the year, so it's not gonna be a huge deal for me. If you live up North though, that might be a problem for you. I've been having so much fun in the last month and a half using the Sea Star. I've been able to shoot everything from the sun to the moon to a lot of deep sky targets that I normally wouldn't be able to shoot just because they're so far away. It's been great. I've been able to do it all casually, not much effort at all. This is definitely the unit that I'm going to be taking with me when I go photograph the eclipse in 2024 in April. This will now be a crucial part of my deep sky rig when I go traveling out to the desert. It'll go right alongside my Star Tracker and DSLR camera when I'm doing nightscapes. Well guys, there's been a lot of stuff going on lately. I've been working a lot and I've finally got some free time to sit back, do some more astrophotography and make some more YouTube videos and there's so much to talk about. I got these incredible filters from Altair. They've been a game changer and I can't wait to talk more about these. And I've been testing those new filters out with a new rig. Check it out. <laughs> I'm so excited about this, guys. I can't wait to show you what it does, make some more videos about it. And don't worry, I'm not going to get away from DSLR and lens photography. I'm still going to be doing a lot of that. This is just the next step on my astrophotography journey. I'll be leaving a link down in the description below where you can buy a Sea Star if you really want one. And I guess that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked anything, learned anything, please let me know down in the comments. Give me a like. Please subscribe and all that good stuff. So, as always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes. See you in the next one.